Yadav refers to a grouping of traditionally mainly non-elite, peasant pastoral communities or castes in India and Nepal that since the 19th and 20th centuries have claimed descent from the mythological king Yadu as a part of a movement of social and political resurgence. The term Yadav now covers many traditional peasant pastoral castes such as Ahirs of the Hindi belt and the Gavli of Maharashtra. Traditionally, Yadav groups were linked to cattle raising and as such, were outside the formal caste system. Since the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the Yadav movement has worked to improve the social standing of its constituents, through Sanskritization, active participation in the Indian and British armed forces, expansion of economic opportunities to include other, more prestigious business fields, and active participation in politics. Yadav leaders and intellectuals have often focused on their claimed descent from Yadu, and from Krishna, which they argue confers Kshatriya status upon them. An effort has been invested in recasting the group narrative to emphasize Kshatriya like valor. However, the overall tenor of their movement has not been overtly egalitarian in the context of the larger Indian caste system. Origins In mythology The term Yadav or sometimes Yadava has been interpreted to mean a descendant of Yadu, who is a mythological king, using very broad generalizations. Jayant Gudkari says that it is almost certain from analysis of the Puranas that Indaka, Vrishni, Satvada, and Abhira were collectively known as Yadavas and worshipped Krishna. Gudkari further notes of these ancient works that it is beyond dispute that each of the Puranas consists of legends and myths. But what is important is that, within that framework, a certain value system is propounded. Lucia Michaluti notes that at the core of the Yadav community lies a specific folk theory of descent, according to which all Indian pastoral castes are said to descend from the Yadu dynasty, hence the label Yadav to which Krishna, a cowherder, and supposedly a Kshatriya belonged. There is a strong belief amongst them that all Yadavs belong to Krishna's line of descent, the Yadav subdivisions of today being the outcome of a fission of an original and indifferentiated group. Historians such as P. M. Chandorkar have used epigraphical and similar evidence to argue that Ahirs and Gavlis are representative of the ancient Yadavas and Abharas mentioned in Sanskrit works. In practice There are several communities that coalesce to form the Yadavs. Christoph Joffrelo has remarked that the term Yadav covers many castes which initially had different names, Ahir in the Hindi belt, Punjab and Gujarat, Gavli in Maharashtra, Gola in Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka etc. Their traditional common function, all over India, was that of herdsmen, cowherds and milksellers. However, Joffrelo has also said that most of the modern Yadavs are cultivators, mainly engaged in tilling the land, and less than one third of the population are occupied in raising cattle or the milk business. M. S. A. Rao had earlier expressed the same opinion as Joffrelo, and noted that the traditional association with cattle, together with the belief in descent from Yadu, defines the community. According to David Mandelbaum, the association of the Yadav and their constituent castes, Ahir and Gwala with cattle has impacted on their commonly viewed ritual status varna as Shudra, although the community's members often claim the higher status of Kshatriya. The Shudra status is explained by the nomadic nature of herdsmen, which constrained the ability of other groups in the Varna system to validate the adherence to practices of ritual purity, by their involvement in castration of the animals, which was considered to be a ritually polluting act, and because the sale of milk, as opposed to personal use thereof, was thought to represent economic gain from a sacrosanct product, according to Lucia Michaluti. Yadavs constantly trace their caste predispositions and skills to descent, and in doing so they affirm their distinctiveness as a caste. For them, caste is not just appellation but quality of blood Yalman 1969-87, in Gupta 2000-82. This view is not recent. The Ahirs today Yadavs had a lineage view of caste Fox 1971, Unathan Kumar 1997 that was based on a strong ideological model of descent. This descent-based kinship structure was also linked to a specific Kshatriya and their religious tradition centered on Krishna mythology and pastoral warrior hero god cults. <laughs> Yadavs in modern India Occupational background, and location 
The Yadavs mostly live in northern India, and particularly in Haryana, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Traditionally, they were a non-elite pastoral caste. Their traditional occupations changed over time and for many years Yadavs have been primarily involved in cultivation, although Mikuluti has noted a recurrent pattern since the 1950s whereby economic advancement has progressed through involvement in cattle-related business to transportation and thence to construction. Employment with the army and the police have been other traditional occupations in northern India, and more recently government employment in that region has also become significant. She believes that positive discrimination measures and gains as a consequence of land reform legislation have been important factors in at least some areas. Lucia Mikuluti notes that European ethnographers left a legacy of hundreds of pages of ethnographic and ethnological details which portray the Ahir, Yadavs as martial, and wealthy, or as cowherders, milk sellers, and low in status terms. In short, there has been no consensus on the nature and occupational status of the Ahir Yadav caste tribe. J. S. Alter notes that in North India, majority of the wrestlers are of Yadav caste. He explains the preponderance of Yadav wrestlers because of their involvement in the milk business and dairy farms. Consuming cow milk and butter is one of the most important part of Yadav culture. One. Although the Yadavs have formed a fairly significant proportion of the population in various areas, including 11% of that of Bihar in 1931, their interest in pastoral activities was not traditionally matched by ownership of land and consequently they were not a dominant caste. Their traditional position, which Joffrelo describes as low caste peasants, also mitigated against any dominant role. Their involvement in pastoralism accounts for a traditional view of Yadavs as being peaceful, while their particular association with cows has a special significance in Hinduism, as do their beliefs regarding Krishna. Against this image, Russell and Lai, writing in 1916, called the Ahir subdivision uncouth, although it is unclear whether their comments were based entirely on proverbial stories, on observation or on both. Tilak Gupta said that this view persisted in modern times in Bihar, where the Yadav were viewed in highly negative terms by other groups. However, Mikuluti observed, these very same people acknowledge and coveted their political influence, connections and abilities. The Yadavs have, however, demonstrated a feature, driven by their more notable members, that shares a similarity with other Indian communities. Mandelbaum has noted that as the families of a Jati, in sufficient number, accrue a strong power base, and as their leading men become united enough to move together for higher status, they typically step up their efforts to improve their Jati customs. They try to abandon demeaning practices and to adopt purer and more prestigious ways. They usually want to drop the old name for a better one. Topic. Sanskritization. By the end of the 19th century, some Yadavs had become successful cattle traders and others had been awarded government contracts to care for cattle. Joffrelo believes that the religious connotations of their connections to the cow and Krishna were seized upon by those Yadavs seeking to further the process of Sanskritization, and that it was Rao Bahadur Balbir Singh, a descendant of the last Abhira dynasty to be formed in India, who spearheaded this. Singh established the Ahir Yadav Kshatriya Mahasabha in 1910, which at once asserted that its Ahir constituents were of Kshatriya ritual rank in the Varna system, descended from Yadu as was Krishna, and really known as Yadavs. The organization claimed support from the facts that various Raj ethnologists had earlier claimed a connection between the Ahir and the Abhira, and because their participation in recent events such as the Indian Rebellion of 1857 had demonstrated that Ahirs were good fighters, the AYKM was a self-contained unit and did not try to forge links with similar bodies among other caste groups that claimed Kshatriya descent at that time. It had some success, notably in breaking down some of the very strict traditions of endogamy within the community, and it gained some additional momentum as people from rural areas gradually migrated away from their villages to urban centers such as Delhi. Ameliorating the effects of strict endogamy was seen as being conducive to causing the community as a whole to unite, rather than existing as smaller subdivisions within it. Rao has said that the events of this period meant that the term Yadava refers to both an ethnic category and an ideology of particular significance in the movement for Sanskritization of the community was the role of the Arya Samaj, whose representatives had been involved with the family of Singh since the late 1890s and who had been able to establish branches in various locations. 
Although this movement, founded by Swami Dayananda Saraswati, favored a caste hierarchy and also endogamy, its supporters believed that caste should be determined on merit rather than on heritage. They therefore encouraged Yadavs to adopt the sacred thread as a symbolic way to defy the traditional inherited caste system, and they also supported the creation of cow protection associations Sabha as a means by which Yadavs and other non-Brahmins could affirm the extent of their commitment to Hinduism by observing the strictures relating to cow slaughter. In Bihar, where the Bhumihars and Rajputs were the dominant groups, the wearing of the thread by Ahirs led to occasions of violence. Jafralo has contrasted the motivations of Yadav Sanskritization with that of the Nairs, another Indian community. He notes that Ganendra Pandi, Rao, and M. N. Srinivas all assert that Yadav Sanskritization was not a process to imitate or raise the community to ritual parity with the higher ranks but rather to undermine the authority of those ranks. He contrasts this subversion theory with the Nair's motive of emancipation, whereby Sanskritization was a means of reconciling low ritual status with growing socio-economic assertiveness and of taking the first steps towards an alternative, Dravidian identity." Using examples from Bihar, Jafralo demonstrates that there were some organized attempts among members of the Yadav community where the driving force was clearly secular and in that respect similar to the Nair's socio-economic movement. These were based on a desire to end oppression caused by, for example, having to perform begari forced labor for upper castes and having to sell produce at prices below those prevailing in the open market to the zamindars, as well as by promoting education of the Yadav community. This aggressive Sanskritization, which caused riots in the area, was emulated by some other of the lower caste groups. In support of the argument that the movements bore similarity, Jafralo cites Hetukar Jha, who says of the Bihar situation that, "...the real motive behind the attempts of the Yadavas, Kermis and Karas at Sanskritizing themselves was to get rid of this socio-economic repression." The process of Sanskritization often included creating a history. The first such for the Yadavs was written in the late 19th century by Vithal Krishnaji Kedkar, a schoolteacher who became private secretary to a Maharaja. In 1959, Kedekar's work was published by his son, Raghunath Vithal Kedkar, who was a surgeon, under the title The Divine Heritage of the Yadavas. There has been subsequent work to develop his ideas, notably by K. C. Yadav and J. N. Singh Yadav. Kedekar's history made the claim that Yadavs were descendants of the Abhira tribe and that the modern Yadavs were the same community referred to as dynasties in the Mahabharata and Puranas. Describing the work of the Kedekars as a well-edited and well-produced volume." Mandelbaum notes that the Yadavs have usually been held in considerably less glorious repute by their neighbors. While an occasional warrior of a pastoral jati did establish his own state and dynasty, cattle keepers are ranked in many localities among the lower blocks of the Shudras. The book postulates divine and noble ancestry for a good many jatis in several language regions covering hundreds and thousands of people who share little more than a traditional occupation and a conviction about their rightful prerogatives. In creating this history there is some support for an argument that Yadavs were looking to adopt an ethnic identity akin to the Dravidian one that was central to the Sanskritization of the Nairs and other in South India. However, Jafralo believes that such an argument would be overstated because the Yadav redrawing of history," was much more narrow, being centered on themselves rather than on any wider shared ethnic base. They did acknowledge groups such as the Jats and Marathas as being similarly descended from Krishna but they did not particularly accommodate them in their adopted Aryan ethnic ideology, believing themselves to be superior to these other communities. Jafralo considers the history thus created to be one that is "...largely mythical and enabled Yadav intellectuals to invent a golden age." Mikaluti prefers the term Yadavization to that of Sanskritization. She argues that the perceived common link to Krishna was used to campaign for the official recognition of the many and varied herding communities of India under the title of Yadav, rather than merely as a means to claim the rank of Kshatriya. Furthermore, that Social leaders and politicians soon realized that their number and the official proof of their demographic status were important political instruments on the basis of which they could claim a reasonable share of state resources. Topic: All India Yadav Mahasabha. 
The All India Yadav Mahasabha AIYM was founded at Allahabad in 1924 by a meeting of disparate local groups from Bihar, Punjab and what is now Uttar Pradesh. Although the AIYM was initially organized by VK Ketakar, it was Rao Balbir Singh who developed it and this coincided with a period, during the 1920s and 1930s, when similar Sanskritization movements elsewhere in the country were on the wane. The program included campaigning in favor of teetotalism and vegetarianism, both of which were features of higher-ranking castes, as well as promoting self-education and promoting the adoption of the Yadav name. It also sought to encourage the British Raj to recruit Yadavs as officers in the army and sought to modernize community practices such as reducing the financial burden dowries and increasing the acceptable age of marriage. Furthermore, the AIYM encouraged the more wealthy members of the community to donate to good causes, such as for the funding of scholarships, temples, educational institutions, and intra community communications. The Yadav belief in their superiority impacted on their campaigning. In 1930, the Yadavs of Bihar joined with the Kurmi and Kori agriculturalists to enter local elections. They lost badly but in 1934 the three communities formed the Triveni Sang political party, which allegedly had a million dues-paying members by 1936. However, the organization was hobbled by competition from the Congress-backed Backward Class Federation, which was formed around the same time, and by co-option of community leaders by the Congress party. The Triveni Sang suffered badly in the 1937 elections, although it did win in some areas. Aside from an inability to counter the superior organizational ability of the higher castes who opposed it, the unwillingness of the Yadavs to renounce their belief that they were natural leaders and that the Kurmi were somehow inferior was a significant factor in the lack of success. Similar problems beset a later planned caste union, the Raghav Samaj, with the Karis. In the post colonial period, according to Mikaluti, it was the process of Yadavization and the concentration on two core aims increasing the demographic coverage and campaigning for improved protection under the positive discrimination scheme for backward classes that has been a singular feature of the AIYM, although it continues its work in other areas such as promotion of vegetarianism and teetotalism. Their proposals have included measures designed to increase the number of Yadavs employed or selected by political and public organizations on the grounds of their numerical strength, including as judges, government ministers and regional governors. By 2003 the AIYM had expanded to cover 17 states and Mikaluti believed it to be the only organization of its type that crossed both linguistic and cultural lines. It continues to update its literature, including websites, to further its belief that all claimed descendants of Krishna are Yadav. It has become a significant political force, the campaign demanding that the army of the Raj should recruit Yadavs as officers resurfaced in the 1960s. Well-reported bravery during fighting in the Himalayas in 1962, notably by the 13th Kumaon Company of AHIRs, led to a campaign by the AIYM demanding the creation of a specific Yadav regiment. Post-independence Rao's study of the Yadava elite in the various states based on the members and supporters of the All India Yadav Sabha and not on those of the rival All India Yadav Mahasabha reveals the growth of varied business and professional groups within the caste category. Heading the list are businessmen who comprise roughly 21% of the elite. They include dairy owners, contractors, tobacco and timber merchants, wholesale grass dealers, owners of engineering firms and other industries as well as restaurant owners. They are followed by the large farmers who comprise around 21% of the Yadav elite. Politicians MPs, MLAs, ministers, municipal councillors, district board members, office bearers of political parties constitute 17% of the elite and school and college teachers, doctors, lawyers and engineers together another 20%. Mandelbaum has commented on how the community basks in the reflected glory of those members who achieve success, that Yadav publications proudly cite not only their mythical progenitors and their historical rajas, but also contemporaries who have become learned scholars, rich industrialists, and high civil servants. He notes that this trait can also be seen among other caste groups. The Siddhar festival is celebrated by Yadav community in Hyderabad, the following the day of Diwali each year. Community members parade, dancing around their best buffalo bulls, which have been colorfully decorated with flowers and paint. Topic. Classification 
The Yadavs are included in the other backward classes OBCs category in the Indian states of Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Delhi, Haryana, Jharkhand, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, and West Bengal. In the state of Uttar Pradesh the Social Justice Committee reported over representation of upper OBCs, especially the Yadavs in public offices and suggested creating sub-categories within the OBC category and the Yadav, Ahir are the only group listed in Part A of a three-part OBC classification system introduced there following the official report of 2001. The Allahabad High Court in 2013, restrained government of Uttar Pradesh from continuing the reservation for Ahir, Yadav, Yadavanshi and Gwala stating the reason that representation of these OBC communities in government services has reached to 59.67%. Court also said that exclusion of well-represented classes will help other groups who are not able to compete with these advanced groups. Gallery See also List of Yadavs Yadavanshi Ahirs Ahir clans Nanvanshi References <references> <references>